So I think we're spitballing it here. How long the video is gonna be? Regardless, Alex and his lovely friends at work helped us get this ring done. Day one and one. Day Still not finished. <laughs> Attempt three to install the fuel system back together. Take your radium. You do make a, a fantastic product. However, um, we do have issues, and uh, we d we are trying to resolve through them as uh, as we move along. The pumps are in. Thank God. Uh, we did solder the wiring, so that's done. However, my tank pumps are still loose and you can push them in and out. Uh, there was lovely driving the car back to the, the garage today. Nothing but fumes of uh, 91 octane. And uh, nevertheless, we did get the part that we needed and we got it. We got the threads remachined inside here so we can go ahead and put the screws and actually have them hold. We went ahead and got a little longer screws. We had seven eighths before on the length of the screw. We went ahead and uh, did a one inch. That's a little bit longer than before and that's gonna allow us to grab a little bit more thread. So that's gonna ensure that we have a good contact. I think it's so, driving under influence. Yes. Uh, Never mind. There were no fumes in the car and uh, it drove beautifully here. I smell no gas. Nevertheless, we need to put this ring back together. This is our lower uh, bread <laughs> bun, if you will, of this uh, of our uh, sandwich inside the tank. And uh, we need to couple it together so we have a safe fuel system. So uh, with no further ado, let's go ahead and do that. Implore all our uh, special techniques that we learn by trying to do this in the first place. And hopefully today's the day that we get the job done. How much fuel do you have inside? Very little. Are you fill up before you No, it's... I don't want to spill it. I'm, it's considered driving under the influence, remember? supply all right so there we have it uh, we remove the pump from the gas can hopefully for the last time so now we're gonna go ahead and drop in the ring and we're gonna put it back and try to initiate the lockdown by going around and uh, putting on the screws. So because we actually had to drill the holes a little larger so we don't have the screw going in sideways, we did leave a little bit of debris in the tank, but for the most part we did grab everything that was uh, left over. We did use a pan underneath to hold it uh, to hold most of the debris out of the way. But it's in inevitable that you get some in there, like this extra piece of glove that fell in there. So, nevertheless, we're just checking for any extra debris that we can remove by hand right now. So right now, Alex is actually checking to make sure that the ring does not go. Uh, one way or another so basically we can flip the 180 and it will make a difference it's good all right we got a thumbs up from alex that means we're gonna go ahead and uh, install the piece down
crazy actually we're trying to sort out why the the system failed in the first place and it took us a while but we actually figured it out uh, we actually have a health tech relay uh, in the health tech relay box and on either engine bay and that looks like this this is exactly the relay so here we are this is exactly the bypass that we're doing the reason why we need to do a bypass loop is because we are first of all using our own relays we weren't getting a signal back here into the trunk so my question was is the ECU sending the signal and if it is why is it not getting back here the relay that we pulled out it was, it was supposed to do exactly that it was supposed to trigger uh, when this ECU send the signal and send power over to the back let's actually go ahead and uh, look at our diagram here so here it is I mapped up everything that we need to do and also the current system that is in the car right now so the ECU sends a signal to the relay in our fuse box and the relay sends a signal out over to our other relay that we're, we're actually mounting right now but currently we're just sending a signal out and then this was actually feeding the pump here this this being our fuel pump all right and then this is our battery the blue in our case which is 85 uh, and all relays are the same so this 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 uh, goes for everything blue is actually our ground up here so blue is ground ECU trigger which is here would actually feed this so that's what's coming from over here ECU trigger and and then we have our 87 which goes to the fuel the fuel pump so because we don't need this relay we are using our own relay there's there's a redundance of having two relays we're gonna go ahead and replace the function of this relay this is a smaller relay this is a 30 and a 50 on 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 duty relay this was only a 30 amp so we're just gonna bypass it the only thing we're gonna end up doing here in the fuse box is literally just jump it okay we're still gonna have a fuse here which I believe is a, a 20 amp fuse for this for this circuit here which is nice because you can not have you can never have enough fuses but this is exactly what we're doing right now we're, we're in the fuse box of the Heltec we're jumping over we're sending our signal over to our new relay and with that relay is actually going to go ahead and power our new fuel pump all right guys so as you can see we've been busy we mapped everything out this is the setup that we are going to go ahead and implement here it's basically this times three the only difference is the signal from the ecu that's coming here currently on the fuel pump is going to be different from for the secondary pump that runs on e85 because that wire needs to come from an actual exit of the computer or channel if you will that would be dedicated to the pump we're going to do that later we're not going to do that right now but right now we are going to wire up everything and have everything ready for just bringing that one extra wire to be our signal wire for our third relay alex is uh doing some of the work So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this into our Heltec box and then we can go ahead and finish up up front. Everything in the front is buttoned up. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna turn on the ignition and I'm gonna check for the final time that actually our uh, bypass is working properly. I'm gonna, ignition is on. So we're going to have to get 12 volts, 9.4, but nevertheless, we are getting power back here. So there you have it. This is the piece that we're going to mount our, all our relays to. And 
next thing I want to do is because we have a little scrap piece of uh, carbon fiber, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this, wrap this in, into this, so we'll have a nice finish. Have a nice finished plate. Right, let's see if we can find some screws so we can mount our relays. Right, fantastic, we found these beautiful screws right here and we're gonna go ahead and use them. Alright, so there we go, we have our first. We're gonna go ahead and mount our main pump. This concludes our fuel setup. These are actually gonna tie into everything else, but uh, this is the plate that we're actually gonna mount in the car. Uh, and um, yeah, let's, let's check for fitment. Just like that. All right, so now it's time to actually wire these bad boys up. I do have the diagram that came with, uh, there we go. That's the diagram that came with the relays. Um, So I'm looking at the center one, which is AC contact, and uh, we don't need this one particularly. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and cut it. If you could hear me now, I told you. I just uh, I sleeve this shut, so that way the contact doesn't go anywhere. Let's go ahead and plug it in. This is the ground. This is two pump. So this is what we need. To power our system with. Go ahead and loop it. This is coming from, and this is coming from battery. This is also our trigger point. This is the fuse that's going to go with this relay. So between we, uh, before we send power to the relay here, we're going to actually go to the fuse first. So there's two, uh, two uh, phases on the fuse. We are going to connect through one of them. Moving on to the next one, basically the same principle. These two wires here are actually feeding the signal to these two relays, which do run in parallel. I also, I, I'm always gonna, I'm always gonna need a pickup pump and the main pump to run together. So the signal for these comes from one source. All right, so our third relay is going in. We have this whole panel uh, ready to go, more or less. We did what we did wire up all three fuses to the relays as we, uh, as we need. We need to do the grounds now. This panel is complete. All the wiring is, uh, is done. You have to run some extra wires inside the car to get from the ECU. Uh, trigger point, uh, apparently our uh, number one trigger point is not functioning correctly. And I don't know exactly why, but that's a health thing related uh, issue. So I'm gonna get somebody that actually knows more than I do how to deal with that problem. For now, we're gonna trigger off the battery and we are, we're gonna just run it just the way it was, but with our new setup. And then we're gonna have to figure out how to get the signal out from the ECU to come to make uh, a trigger point for our third relay. So let's go ahead and, and put it in. We got our ground loop. We have our pumps. 
um, wires here. This is going to remain unplugged. You're going to use a, uh, the existing wiring for now. And yeah, just put this in the car, see how it goes. to uh, use the relays that we we, we purchased and we uh, we place in we place in the car everything checks out we, we check the power um, for now we're running 12 gauge wires I believe two 12, 12 gauge wire and we need to switch over to three 10 gauge wire we already purchased the wire but we didn't have a chance tonight to um, to do the switch and also ground the pumps a little better than they are right now um, with a little thicker gauge wire and maybe source it out straight to the battery so that way we have a nice solid ground uh, throughout our, our fuel system. But nevertheless, everything is done. There is no more smell of fuel and I can drive uh, back to the, to the station without having any issues. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up and we'll see you guys in the next video.